when I tried to get a hold of Sarah, uh, her, it went right to her voicemail, her cell phone, so I tried to call Michael, and I kept getting a busy signal. It was a nerve-wracking day as a Valley family tried to reach their daughter stationed at Fort Hood, the site of a mass shooting this afternoon. The NAACP is trying to improve our future by looking to the past. The group's president explained why. You're watching WHSV News 3. 11 minutes of non-stop news and weather starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Haley Harrison. And I'm Val Thompson. Thank you for staying up with us tonight. More details are emerging tonight about today's shooting rampage at Fort Hood, Texas, including the news that the alleged gunman is still alive. Investigators had initially reported that Major Nadal Hassan had been killed. Jessica Wiley is in Fort Hood with the latest on the victims and the alleged shooter. An Army officer armed with two handguns opened fire around 1.30 p.m. local time at Fort Hood's Soldier Readiness Processing Center, where soldiers were preparing for deployment to Iraq. He killed 12 people and injured more than 30 before being shot by police. Preliminary reports indicate there was a single shooter that was shot multiple times at the scene. However, he was not killed as previously reported. Authorities have identified the shooter as Major Nadal Hassan, a psychiatrist transferred to the Texas Post in July. He was about to be deployed, but reportedly did not want to go. SWAT teams and police converged on the sprawling post and locked it down, including the community's nine schools. It's really disheartening to be, you know something's going on and you can't get to your child. A note on the Post website alerted them to the emergency and said, quote, this is not a drill. Fort Hood's 1st Cavalry Division, some 15,000 troops are now in Iraq, making the shooting that much more tragic. They've suffered the highest casualties there of any single military installation in the country. It's difficult enough when we lose these brave Americans in battles overseas. Uh, it is horrifying that they should come under fire at an Army base on American soil. The lockdown here has been lifted, while other bases around the country are stepping up security. The suspect is in a nearby hospital in stable condition. The Army says tomorrow will be a day of mourning here. Jessica Willie, ABC News, Fort Hood, Texas. And the alleged gunman has several ties to Virginia. Hassan was born in the Commonwealth and earned his bachelor's degree from Virginia Tech in 1997. He also worked as a psychiatrist at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in D.C. for six years. Only on three tonight, the Virginia connections in this story go beyond the shooter. The shootings hit especially close to home for a Harrisonburg family tonight. Barbara Alsahevsky's daughter, Sarah, is a military police officer stationed at Fort Hood. After several attempts this afternoon, Barbara says she was finally able to reach her son-in-law on base, who said he, Sarah, and their newborn son were all safe. They were two miles away from where the shootings took place. Barbara says it's days like today that make being a military mom difficult. Just the waiting to hear from her and make sure she was okay. That was the, bit, that was the hardest part. It's tough, and I try to be strong for them, for her. But I have my breaking points. Barbara has two daughters currently serving in the military. Sarah has been out of touch with her family tonight while on duty patrolling Fort Hood. And the family is not alone. Chad Adams in Harrisonburg writes on our Facebook page, My brother is stationed at Fort Hood. He's been there for about eight years. He's been to Iraq twice. He called us and told us that he was safe. It's a sad, sad day. Unbelievable. And Glowrick Ray writes, I just wanted to say how badly I feel about the loss of lives today at Fort Hood. I have a son who made it back safely from Iraq and another son in the Air Force. We are so proud of the young men and women who risk their lives for the betterment of others. This is truly a sad day. We also have reaction tonight from some in the Valley who served in the military or are currently serving in the armed forces. They say what's shocking is that the alleged gunman was a fellow soldier. Our Mary Poli has more on what else they're saying about today's attack. Mary? Well, Haley Val, many soldiers expect to face danger in battle. The both men I spoke to tonight say there was no way to prepare for what occurred at Fort Hood. It was quite shocking to find out that someone had done such a thing. 
Vietnam Air Force veteran Eugene Chavis first learned of the Fort Hood shooting during tonight's 6 p.m. newscast. He says finding out the alleged shooter was one of the military's own made it more shocking. Without a clear reason for the shooting, Chavis says folks can only speculate that post-traumatic stress was a factor. It may be PTSD and the person just actually snapped from combat and of course there you again you don't know exactly what the problem was. My thoughts and prayers just went out to the families and to the Fort Hood community on, on this tragedy. National Guard 116th Brigade Public Affairs Officer Major Nevin Blankenship is coming to terms as well. Major Blankenship says he expects soldiers to be put in harm's way in battle, but says this attack has caught everyone off guard. It's something you don't prepare for. We're, we're trained to go overseas. We're, we're, we're not trained to do uh, anything on our base. It, it's, our train don't prepare us for that. Some members of the Virginia National Guard were recently sent to Fort Hood for training. They d returned just a few days ago. Val? Thank you, Mary. And some local soldiers plan to go back to Fort Hood after Thanksgiving. And stay tuned after our show to Nightline for live coverage of the mass shootings from Fort Hood. Cynthia McFadden will have more on the suspect, Dr. Nadal Malik Hassan, starting at 11.35 p.m. Fresh from his victory in the 20th District House of Delegates race Tuesday, Delegate-elect Dickie Bell is thrilled about the outcome of another vote tonight. Tonight, Bell requested the Augusta County Board allow him to continue teaching at Riverheads High School while serving in the General Assembly. After hours of hearing public comment on Bell's behalf, the board decided to grant him a leave of absence request. Bell says he's pleased and relieved. An organization that has fought for the rights of African Americans for a hundred years is now fighting for education reform. <laughs> NAACP President Ben Jealous spoke at Blue Ridge Community College today with a speech called The Importance of Education in Leadership. He talked with an emphasis on reaching out to the youth of America, saying it's important to tell stories about our history to help solve today's problems like health care and education reform. We have public schools that are failing across the country. If cities like Baltimore and Richmond where way over 50% of the young black men don't finish high school, to get to young people today, you have to affirm that the issues that they're facing are as important as anything that we faced in the past and just as easy to overcome if we apply ourselves. Jealous is touring the states with his speech on youth and education with an upcoming stop in Indiana. 